So, we are now ready to continue with some fantastic talks this afternoon. Our first speaker for the afternoon is Dr. Ron Tompkins. We are really lucky to have him here today. Um, Ron is the uh, Sumner M. Redstone Professor of Surgery at Harvard Medical School. He's the founding director of the Center for Surgery Science and Bioengineering at Mass Gen Hospital, and he's the Chief of Staff Emeritus at the Shriners Hospital for Children in Boston. He's an incredible trauma and burn physician and specialist at Mass Gen, um, and he is now the director of the Harvard Collaborative Center for um, MECFS Research, uh, funded by the OMF, found, uh, funded by OMF. And uh, we're really excited to hear about the updates that he'll have today. Uh, I've worked with uh, Ron Tompkins for at least two decades. And um, I've always wondered why I get along so well with him. And then I discovered that he is a chemical engineer from MIT, it's one nerd to another. And. Uh, <laughs> But that's good because it means we, we speak the same language. And uh, uh, the, one of the big projects we worked on was a trauma project. And, and, and initially doing that was um, uh, working at a lot of the technologies and with patients and so forth and realizing how complicated that is. I learned a lot from Ron Tompkins. And uh, <clears throat> then looking through the early data from, from MECFS patients, there's, there's quite a large amount of similarity to what happens uh, in, in kind of a trauma event. And, and it's basically how the, lots of the components of how their immune system responds and so forth. So um, we thought we could probably learn a lot by doing that comparison and also having somebody with a lot of experience with trauma and also what works with them and what, how you can treat them and so forth. So that's the reason he's here. Uh, uh, that's the reason he set up a collaborative research center um, at the Stanford of the East. <laughs> so, so we had to do that in order to get him allow, for Stanford to allow him in here. Well, <laughs> anyway, it's a delight to have him. Thank you so much, Ron. Uh, I have to say it's been a, a real delight uh, working with Ron over the last two decades. I think that we made tremendous progress. Uh, as Ron would uh, explain to me some of the early findings uh, in ME research, and those were rather early days, uh, it really struck me uh, that it had many of the common features that are seen after physical injury. and the immune reaction and the metabolic systems and the tissues that are involved um, are, are very common and that we could learn a great deal by uh, our learning and understanding of uh, the response to physical stress. Um, so uh, I'm delighted to be part of this and very much appreciate the opportunity uh, to be with you all. Um, as Ron mentioned, uh, <clears throat> uh, MECFS has been uh, a clinical entity at Mass General Hospital and at the Brigham and Women's Hospital for quite some time. I began to ask around with some of my colleagues about their experience with this, and it turns out many of the people that I've known for almost the 40 years, more than 40 years that I've been um, at MGH and Harvard, that uh, there was a tremendous amount of not only clinical interest, but as well interest in research. And they've just been working in their little silos and <clears throat> multiple of the institutions. And with a little bit of activation energy to get them to work together as a collaborative has been an amazingly simple um, activity. Um, <clears throat> Here are a few people that are listed. Uh, the Harvard affiliate, major Harvard affiliate hospitals are Mass General, the Brigham and Beth Israel, and Deaconess Medical Center. There are probably 30 or 40 other entities um, within the Harvard Medical School uh, environment. As I mentioned here, it is essential collaboration between ourselves and <coughs> Ron's center here at Stanford. 
Um, we coaxed into this collaboration uh, some investigators from the United Kingdom. Um, Janet Lord it runs the immunology program at the University of Birmingham, and two classically trained uh, metabolic uh, scientists um, at the University of Nottingham. And <clears throat> it promises to have a, a wonderful relationship with them. As, as I don't really need to introduce Maureen Hansen, as you know, uh, she's just not that, Cornell is just down the road, and so it's just a delight uh, to work with Maureen. More recently, Jonas uh, Berquist, uh, Uppsala, is a one, also a wonderful opportunity. And we've had a very long-standing relationship in uh, proteomics and metabolomics uh, at the Pacific Northwest National Labs. And so this was the initial founding group of our organization. We had our first meeting um, in June <clears throat> uh, as a uh, kickoff opportunity. And so now uh, my baby is, uh, I guess, three months old. <laughs> so um, here at a very high level, just give you a flavor without going into any detail. Some of the activities that are being pursued uh, within the within uh, the center, I've in indicated here whether they're just being initiated and going through human studies approval and all the regulatory and, and complicated features uh, related. Uh, <clears throat> some uh, have been ongoing and, and uh, uh, then this there's an example of one to be done in the future. Um, so let me explain. Our, we wish to take advantage of some of the unique understandings that exist within the group, as well as some of the truly unique uh, facilities and resources that exist within the organization. Um, one of the things that Ron mentioned was in the response to physical injury, we learned a tremendous amount of how, how skeletal muscle and fat and, and many tissues normally respond to serious physical stress in comparison to normal individuals. And so the rationale is that at least in MECFS, uh, post-exertional malaise is such a big deal uh, as, as part of the disastrous symptoms that exist in ME, that how the, how the skeletal muscle is responding to the stresses that occur in ME would be a very useful thing to do, um, in that it can suggest abnormal pathways, potentially biomarkers, and might suggest drug targets um, for future therapies. Um, in the communist I shouldn't be saying this because there's so many watching from, from afar, but in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, there is quite a bit of conservatism with respect to human studies and such. So to convince uh, the ethics committee to allow us to do skeletal muscle biopsies on patients, much less on healthy individuals, is um, it's gonna be a struggle enough to get them to let us do it on patients. And we may even have to have the patient community help us convince them that it's important enough for us to do. But we have no prayer with respect to doing with, on uh, normal, uh, healthy individuals. Um, our friends in the United Kingdom have been studying the effects of age and inflammation on skeletal muscle and the immune system for many years and are truly expert at that. And so to understand those abnormalities in patients, we really need uh, many examples that are uh, sex and age and, and lifestyle and mobility matching to better understand what is really part of ME and what is really part of the other aspects that we all accumulate as we age. So our, our groups in the United Kingdom are going to be essential for us to begin to understand that. Uh, we have a number uh, I need to mention, um, both at the MGH and the, and the Brigham, um, have been doing invasive CPAT, cardiopulmonary exercise testing, 
And what that means is uh, it includes a radial arterial line and a pulmonary artery line. Both of those are invasive. Having had both myself multiple times, I can tell you it's not a, a fun thing. So I don't take it lightly um, when it's done for diagnostic patient purposes in patients. But it gives essential information to understand <clears throat> the pathophysiology that's occurring in this disease. Um, I would, would like to share with you, I don't really have time to go through it in detail, and I'll mention it uh, one, uh, a little later. There's a very specific abnormality in the cardiopulmonary exercise testing uh, that is consistent with MECFS. This has been done in I, I a bit over 300 patients uh, with a very sound diagnosis of ME, and we're very interested in pursuing the mechanisms related to that. Another unusual opportunity is that we have two imaging centers, um, one exclusively in PET imaging, positon emission tomography, and a second facility that is primarily has been magnetic resonance imaging, um, but it has two of, uh, of a handful of instruments that actually combine both. Um, and we've had them for about 15 years. So it's an opportunity to not only get extremely good structural information, but also functional information in the specific uh, brain nuclei that are activated in this disease process. And so we are very excited about that, and that activity is led by uh, Michael Van Elsiker. I forgot to, to mention our CPET studies are led by uh, <clears throat> David Sistrom. I mentioned here in this slide that in the long run, we would like to have a clinical center of excellence. Now, that's not to say that we don't take care of uh, actually thousands of patients within the MGH Brigham, but it's not a center of excellence. It's it's sporadic, and there are a number of physicians and other clinicians that are quite knowledgeable, but it's not an organized center providing all the necessary support activities um, that we would like to see. And in the long run, we would hope that we would find um, a philanthropic individual who would be willing to help us um, develop such an activity. There's a tremendous interest within both the scientists and the clinicians um, at both the Brigham and the MGH uh, in order to do this. And we'd love to understand this de disease at a much higher level. <clears throat> Number six is really talking about studies to understand the, this form of preload heart failure. And in understanding it, um, better develop. So this is preload heart failure that is associated with uh, predictable uh, post-exertional malaise symptoms, as well as often enri uh, population enriched with what we would call POTS. So I think it offers a tremendous amount of understanding of some of the, the mechanisms and maybe therapies that we'd be using for those aspects of uh, the disease. Let me just mention here um, uh, computerized adaptive testing. Um, we, uh, together with individuals at Boston University, have been very actively involved in developing um, uh, artificial intelligence driven questionnaires that allow patients to very accurately describe their symptoms. And it's much like if you're sitting down with the doctor and they are asking you various characteristics, frequency, and other associated features, let's say with uh, uh, your uh, malaise or your fatigue or your pain or your, your sleep patterns, uh, one can make a questionnaire that is artificially intelligent uh, with regard to those questioning and enabled by machine learning to make that process as efficient as if you were sitting down with the clinician. In those circumstances, you would get a report that you could take with you when you go see your, uh, your clinician. 
And the clinician, it makes their job easier because they can confirm that what you have in your report as how you feel and it's, you spent time and made it exactly the way you want it. And they also can simply confirm that things that are not there are truly not there uh, to their satisfaction. So it's intended as a tool to help your doctor not only to diagnose, but also to follow you in the office. And it might actually even facilitate doctors who are not as expert in ME CFS to better understand uh, where you are with your symptoms. Um, in this day and time when the, you get 15 minutes with the doctor, it's hard to convey everything that's going on with you at a particular time. And this is an artificial intelligence tool to help you do that. That will take about at least three years and we're beginning, we're initiating <clears throat> that program. Of, of course, as a center, you have an obligation for public uh, awareness, to professional activities. We we'll want to engage other doctors who don't, and uh, other healthcare professionals who are not familiar with ME. What are the issues, and so that they can identify you as a patient with this disease. And we've already, uh, together with uh, the Massachusetts MECFS uh, Society which, by the way, I think has been in business for 30-something years, um, and we're working in collaboration with them to accomplish all these interactions with the medical and public communities. Um, in the long term, uh, the hospital, the MGH has an extensive research program by itself of about $800 million a year, so uh, there's much clinical trial infrastructure that we can leverage to for pilot studies as well as we have our own CRO so that pivotal trials for FDA indications can be uh, organized and in a multi-center effort uh, be developed. Um, here are just a little bit more detail about the skeletal muscle, the reason for doing it. Um, and we're going to do a very deep dive. Um, uh, one tremendous opportunity that we've had in the past is our relationship with the Stanford. And <clears throat> when you're doing very deep dives, technically, genomically, proteomically, uh, we've put together a consortium that uh, is quite adept at, uh, at doing the very best state-of-the-art current analyses possible. So although we will not be studying hundreds of patients, we will study tens of patients in such a depth that there would be true understanding as a result. Similarly, we're going to treat our, our colleagues' samples from the UK um, with the same rigor uh, such that even very tiny differences should be able to be uh, discovered. <clears throat> Here, uh, I might just mention uh, for a moment, uh, we have a very strong view that glial cell activation, loosely described as neural inflammation, is uh, essential. And there have been studies, and actually we're, we're very collaborative uh, with Jared Younger in uh, promoting this, and we're a very collaborative center. But we do have some unique resources and facilities. Unfortunately, they're very expensive, and we're sort of moving along in that regard. But we have great hope to be able to be very uh, specific and localized with respect to a better understanding of the nuclei involved uh, in the brain in MECFS. There are other studies that have already been uh, done and, and understood in, I believe, uh, post-treatment Lyme disease uh, um, by, in this facility. And so we're delighted to have that opportunity and think that we will um, move forward. Um, <clears throat> Michael has two projects, one that he's been doing with MR spectroscopy looking at metabolic features of patients who are in the height of their post-exertional malaise. They have an ICPET study done at the Brigham and Women's, and they were asked to come to be imaged at the MGH uh, when they're at the peak of their 
PEM, and generally most of the patients, it's been about 24 hours later, and uh, with their their spectral uh, study with MR to understand some of the metabolic differences that might be present during a PEM episode. Uh, on the drawing board, it's just, no, it's more than drawing board. Uh, there's actually recent IRB approval uh, for a radio ligand to look very directly um, at the uh, nuclei that are activated in ME uh, using multiple advances over prior studies, and we think that'll be a tremendous opportunity. In the last uh, four minutes, um, I'd like to switch over if I could. Um, I went over this very quickly, and what I wanted to introduce is that we do have a website that is officially uh, going public today with the organization. So um, the URL is at the bottom of the screen here, endmecfs.mgh.harvard.edu. If we could switch over, I'll just try to explain just the, in the next few minutes sort of how it's organized so you can get more information. So this is the, um, I'm a Mac person, so this, please bear with me. Uh, this is a PC up here. <laughs> so so this, is the, this is the home page, and uh, it describes our general intent and uh, uh, the organizations. About gives you some information here about uh, sort of uh, uh, the general topics, and here's a picture of us at our symposium in June, uh, and there are links to the institutions. There are very brief, high-level discussions about the type projects and such, and it's certainly not exhaustive or complete. Um, and here's our mention of our relationship. God, a Mac would be so much easier. <laughs> the, uh, God. I'll give up on it, but I just wanted to mention the uh, MECF, the MECFS Association in Massachusetts. Our relationship with them has been uh, really tremendous, uh, connecting us with the, the patient community um, as well as all the other resources that are available. Here are six of the different projects, some of which I didn't get to describe in much uh, detail. The way they're organized is the first page, uh, first page has uh, a high level sort of description, trying to put it, um, this is a very educated, as I've gotten involved with this community, this is a very educated, um, internet savvy community, and uh, so writing this at an eighth grade level just didn't seem right, and, uh, and so it is more complex language than one would normally uh, particularly used on a hospital or medical center based website. So I hope you appreciate that uh, we're respectful and make it as, as uh, informational content as possible. It's also intended for communication among doctors and uh, uh, scientists. Now, so, but it's a high level at the beginning here, and then there's a read more if you want to dig deeper, and this is, this has a lot more. Uh, uh, more in detail description, but feel free to um, look through the site, and we have uh, a number of other uh, features here that are available, and let me just quickly go to contact here. Uh, we very much want to be a part of the community, and uh, although we have limited resources, so please don't expect immediate responses, but we'll, we will do the best that we can um, at the moment and hope to use this as an opportunity to build on this for the future. And uh, here's our, we have an uh, email address, endmecfs at mgh.harvard.edu. And uh, with that, um, I'd like to thank you for your attention, and let's work through this together.